Greetings, everyone. I'm YG Nightstorm, a new affiliation with Church Militant. And guess what? Today, I am 50 years old. Now, I'm excited about that, but this day almost didn't happen. And honestly, 30 days ago, I had two heart attacks, literally died for 15 seconds. And let me tell you, dying will give you a fresh perspective. It helps you really appreciate the people who are there for you in your life when things are good and also for the folks who stick with you during our more difficult times. And that's why I'm excited about this upcoming retreat. The theme of this retreat is the Holy Spirit forgotten and misunderstood. Now, this is what we're talking about. The retreat is Sunday, February 4th through February 11th, departing from Galveston, Texas. Everything big in Texas. <laughs> Two outstanding presenters, Bradley Eli and Jules Gomez. Both veteran church militant staffers, both with multiple advanced degrees in theology, so that means they're pretty smart. Now, each day, there would be morning prayer, rosary, and the Holy Mass. Priests would be available for the sacrament and reconciliation and individual spiritual direction. Mm, that's some good stuff. So why not join us on this journey through the Western Caribbean? And I want to say lastly, God bless you. And everyone you hold dear, I look forward to seeing you on the sea. Let's go, Church Militant, and let's go get them in 2024. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Every bishop's conference on the entire continent of Africa are speaking with one voice and telling Rome they will not bless couples living in sin. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, I've had an eye on Catholic news for more than 30 years now, and I've never seen all the bishops across an entire continent reject any pastoral plan that was signed off by a sitting pope. What's going on? And Brad, the African bishops are indeed making history. This morning, Cardinal Fridolin Ambongo Bezungu, who is a prelate in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but more importantly, he is president of CCAM, that is the Symposium of Episcopal Conferences of Africa and Madagascar. So he's head of the whole uh, Association of African Bishops, and uh, Cardinal Bezungu released a very strong statement that was published in Italian on the Vatican News website, where he spoke after consulting all the bishops' conferences of Africa. He told us a few days ago when Fiducia Suplicans first came out that he would be doing just that. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, the bishops of Africa speaking with one voice. And to quote him, he said, Fiducia Suplicans cannot be implemented in Africa without scandal. Now, that's amazing because this represents more than 500, I counted, more than 524 African dioceses in collectively uh, we're talking about here represented by CCAM. What are all these good bishops specifically now telling Rome? Well, on the one hand, in Cardinal Bezungu's statement, the bishops, you know, speaking through him, have said that they reaffirm their unshakable attachment to Pope Francis. So they're making it very clear that this is not, uh, you know, against Pope Francis. They are not seeking schism. But they then go on to say, let me read what he wrote. He said, after looking at a consolidated summary of the positions adopted by various Episcopal conferences on the African continent, he said this document, that is Fiducia Supplicans, the document that, you know, a green light same-sex blessings or blessings for same-sex couples or couples living uh, in irregular uh, relationships of living in sin. Uh, he said that this document has generated, I quote, a shockwave. It has sown confusion and anxiety in the souls of many lay faithful 
consecrated people and even pastors and has aroused strong reaction. He goes on to say, he says, the language of fiducia supplicants remains too subtle to be understood by simple people. Furthermore, it remains very difficult to convince uh, that same-sex people living in a stable union do not claim the legitimacy of their status. Now, Jules, <laughs> what you're saying here, I mean, a, a lot of people are saying that Africa has a problem with blessing homosexual couples because of the laws in many African countries, the laws, the legalities of banning public displays of homosexuality. But that doesn't seem to be what you're talking about here, that, that these Catholic bishops are actually looking deeper at the moral implications of blessing these couples living in sin and what how it's being perceived by their flock uh, on blessing adulterous unions or same-sex couples that's that's more of what we're seeing here is the moral implications not just the mere legality of their country they're coming from Oh, absolutely Brad because the uh, the Zunga statement very clearly says the main reason why they refuse to bless a same-sex relationship is because they are intrinsically bad. Those are the exact words that he uses. He also says that such relationships are contrary to cultural norms. And then very cleverly, he goes on to use Pope Francis's own words. He says uh, Pope Francis himself is strongly opposed to cultural colonization. Uh, we, we, we've discussed uh, uh, this, uh, Brad, the, the particular African context. Now, very interestingly, George Weigel, uh, the biographer of Pope John Paul II, uh, he has written an article in First Things, which is a serious theological and cultural review. And uh, George Weigel discusses Pope Francis's recent document issued in November. It didn't make particularly big news. Uh, and that document was uh, uh, Novum, uh, uh, it was Ad Theologiam Provendam, Ad Theologiam Provendam. And basically in that document, Pope Francis urges uh, Catholic theologians to do contextual theology. So George Weigel is ripping this apart and he said, well, if uh, he's asking the church to do contextual theology, didn't Fernandes and the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith do contextual theology before issuing fiducia supplicants? Because he says he spoke to an African bishop and the bishop was telling him, that's George Weigel, that uh, uh, this goes completely against our context. For example, he said both the, the, the African bishop told Weigel both Pentecostals and Muslims are aghast at fiducia supplicants. And uh, Brad, as we've all also been talking that, you know, uh, uh, that uh, Anglican, if only they had watched what's happening in the Anglican communion. I mean, even a blind man in a dark room could see what was coming because when the Church of England and the Episcopal Church in America introduced same-sex blessings, uh, uh, it was the African continent who revolted and said, we are no longer, we can no longer be in communion with Canterbury. So, it, 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 you know, the, the same voice is now coming very strongly from the Catholic bishops, if only they had seen this. Now, it's interesting because Fernandez himself, uh, who penned this uh, Fiducia Supplicans, calling for a blessing of same-sex couples and couples living in irregular unions, adulterous couples, he said that it's still, in his clarification that came out, uh, we reported on was a week ago now, the clarification that followed up, which was 3,000 words based on a 5,000 words uh, fiducia supplicans, his clarification said in there, it's always left up to local bishops to look at the context of their situation and judge for themselves what is appropriate. So now we have the African bishops all doing exactly that. 
And at the same time, all of these good bishops are, I mean, there's, there's going to be straw man in the room here. Well, you know, if someone's trying to do God's will and they happen to be in a regular relationship, can't they still get a blessing? Well, all these good bishops are saying, yeah, if one person wants to come up, he wants to go ahead and get a blessing. Uh, always we can do that. But don't come up as a couple, as a unit that's still going to go home as a couple and live as a couple and say, we want you to bless us as a couple. That's what, that's what they're actually rejecting here, correct? Correct, Brad, but let me uh, nuance what you've just said, because uh, Fernandez's clarification was also full of double speak. While on the one hand, he claimed to give the bishops uh, their rightful autonomy. On the other hand, he said, yes, but this is only for a time, a time of reflection. However, because this is a magisterial document, the bishops of any country, any continent, any culture cannot continue to reject papal magisterial teaching forever. Okay, well, let's shift gears then for a minute and focus on Cardinal Fernandez. Uh, he's been getting much bad press from his 1998 uh, porno theology book uh, that was recently rediscovered, but he's once again in the media. Can you tell us about it? Well, this morning, uh, La Stampa, a uh, popular Italian newspaper, published an interview with him. And here in the interview, Fernandez is basically playing the victim card now. He's saying he has been threatened. Uh, three times he has received threatening messages, you know, presumably from rat traps, uh, saying, we will destroy you. And Fernandez says, you know, uh, this sort of thing is terrible uh, because, uh, you know, it, it, it is a hate speech coming from people who claim to be faithful Catholics, faithful to scripture and tradition. Well, that's, that's really convenient to go ahead and blame trads about, you know, but it's kind of like shooting the messenger here when, when really it seems like truth is his biggest enemy. Uh, is he shooting any holes in what the trads are saying or just ignoring what they're saying and attacking them instead? Uh, he's simply doubling down on both his uh, his fiducia supplicans declaration and uh, his clarification. And he's saying blessing gay couples is not blasphemy. Uh, the tenderness of Jesus Christ is for everyone. That's a direct quote. He says that these blessings are evangelical acts, he calls them. And on the contrary, he says it is sacrilegious. He uses this word, it's sacrilegious to discriminate uh, uh, because of someone's sexual or orientation. But of course, uh, you just use the word straw man, Brad. Uh, this is straw manning because nobody is discriminating in any sense against homosexual people, homosexual individuals. Uh, and, but, but well, that, that's what he keeps claiming. It's funny, he keeps going back and forth. You know, you can't discriminate against a homosexual person. Well, all the good African bishops are saying any homosexual person wants to come up and receive a blessing to be stronger in their faith, live the Christian life and all that. Please come forward. Please do. But don't come up with a couple, same-sex partner, adulterous couple. Uh, you can't come up as Herod and Herodias and have us bless you when you're beheading John the Baptist and going to go home that night and celebrate it. I mean, it's just, okay. Seems like the revolt by Catholic bishops against Rome's call to blessing couples living in sin as couples is being led by the good bishops of Africa, a continent spanning more than 50 countries and home to more than 500 dioceses. Just amazing. Pope Francis has called for church leaders to listen to the voice of Catholics on the peripheries. Hope he's listening to the voice coming from Africa because that voice is speaking loud and clear. Jules, thank you so much for your report and for piecing it all together for us. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. This show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless.